Ready? Go! Battleborn's trying to take a ride on the popularity train along with other games releasing May 2016 such as Overwatch. Like Overwatch, the game features a healthy roster of characters, all with different personalities and playstyles. It even shares a similar playstyle for one of its multiplayer modes, Incursion, where you escort a minion wave to your opponent's base. But this is where the similarities seem to end, as the main idea behind Battleborn and why it's even worth talking about is that unlike Overwatch, Battleborn has a story that you can follow alone or with friends to add to the game's playability. Beyond a multiplayer only game style that seems to be getting more and more lazy and prominent in the games industry lately. I'm sorry Overwatch, I love you, but I'm a story gamer. The story revolves around a typical video game plot, save the galaxy. And honestly, in the story department, while it actually has one, it doesn't feel anywhere near as fleshed out as Borderlands 2 was. And maybe that's the problem. Anyone playing this game is likely to be comparing it to both Overwatch and Borderlands 2, which isn't fair. Battleborn's story relies on the player understanding that there are a total of eight missions, nine if you count the prologue, where the order you play them in doesn't matter at all because sadly, there isn't anything tying the missions together. All this leads up to a final fight with Rendane, the main bad guy, and after only nine missions, which each lasts anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, it's not terrible, but if it sounds short, it really feels shorter once you look back on it. Battleborn is first person, but because of the diversity of its characters, it's not limited to being a shooter. You actually have quite a few melee-oriented characters like Wrath, and my favorite for obvious reasons, El Dragon. Either in story or in multiplayer, you start each mission at level 1, and as you prove yourself a badass through kills and capturing objectives, you gain points to level up. And as you level up, you gain access to the game's Helix upgrade system, which lets you build your characters to fit your playstyle on a game-by-game -game basis, because it resets at the beginning of every mission you play. After each mission you complete, you level up your overall command ranking, as well as the character you were playing as. There are lots of things to unlock, from titles and items to character backstories and new skins. While it is amazingly fun to go through story mode with friends and mow down mindless AI, the multiplayer is really lacking a good matchmaking system. Too often you get mismatched against teams of people leveled way higher than you and who usually have a way better gear setup than you do available to them. Also in PvP, several of the characters are distinctively better than others. I find that most melee characters like Galilea, Phoebe, and Wrath tend to live in Gank City and overall make the game way unbalanced for other characters like the Marquis or Thorn. So while it is a great time with friends going through and unlocking things for all the different characters, which hasn't been seen in a lot of games in a while. Its overall drawbacks of PvP matchmaking and lack of content at release with only 9 missions and 3 multiplayer modes make me have to give Battleborn only 3 dragons out of 5. Hey there, thanks so much for watching! If you liked what you saw, feel free to like or share the video with your friends, and if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe, it's the best way to know when I post new videos to the channel, or to know when I'm going streaming live, which I do a lot lately, especially now that I'm streaming Battleborn to unlock all the lore for all the characters. So hopefully I'll see you then, or on the next video. Either way, thanks so much for watching, have a great day.